Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. This will be some light vlog about my day in Tbilisi, my linguistic day. So it happened that today I have two classes, Georgian in the morning and then German. I decided why not to film this day. I will show you my classes, share my impressions from them, go to a coffee shop, show you this area and also even hike. So I will show you the views of Tbilisi. I haven't vlogged for a long time and haven't spoken English for a long time, so I'm worried if I make some mistakes. But anyway, I go to Georgia and to the uh, Sami residence. It is uh, an organization that holds different events, lectures, workshops. And since that building is old, the stairs there are creaking so loudly. So when I'm late for the class, I'm afraid that everybody hears. But actually, it's not a problem. Also, there is a kitchen where you can even make tea or coffee. And I love their minimalistic all-white interior and style. Today we studied numbers and Georgian language has an unusual counting system. They said that it's similar to French, where you count in twenties. Our teacher gave us a very stressful task. My classmate was supposed to tell her phone number to me and they had to write it down. And of course I made mistakes. So I was supposed to call the wrong number and then they would answer me something. And so before that we studied this dialogue. So I was supposed to hear the words and recognize the words, but I was lucky because the number that I dialed just didn't exist. It helps you to create more, I don't know, neural connections. If I remember a new word, I also memorize where and how I learned this word. Another thing I like about being here in the environment is that the whole city is like a textbook for me. For example, this white description, it says Moravi. Well, let's find some other advertisement maybe. I sometimes like to stop here and read words and recognize something. It's like a game and with every level I memorize more and more words and uh, have new accomplishments and goals and just cool, oh my god. While learning other languages I totally lost my English vocabulary. Also one interesting thing about Georgian, when we learn verbs in English or in Russian or in German, you would learn first uh, an infinitive, like to go, to do. But in Georgian we learn such a form when it's singular and when it's the first person. I go, I do. When you learn a verb in this form, you can use a stable structure that will help you to say not only I do, but you do, he does they do and so on. Yeah, we might learn the infinitive as well, but it's so different from other forms. I love this. I can't go on without coffee. Here I came to a quite intricate corner. So in this place there are three cafes in a row where there are a lot of like Russians like myself. The first one is Pulp, the next place Auditoria and the next place is called Bunker. It is like a coffee shop and I'm going there now. So this is my Draniki potato pancakes and coffee with almond milk. One more useful thing is how to differentiate different subjects. And as simple as that, I just choose different colors for them. So for German, I uh, have pink color. It's uh, my workbook, notebook for new words. And this is notebook for homework. And for Georgian, I decided to have it in green and blue colors. Our textbooks are also green. And now I will show you my textbook, by the way. 
Uh, some Georgian words are cognates or, I don't know, borrowings from English or Latin or Greek. For example, this one is uh, computer. Of course, there are words that have uh, only Georgian root and uh, they are extremely hard for me to learn because they don't have connections with any other language. To memorize a word, I like to look up its uh, etymology and it's quite helpful. Another place I want to show you in this row is this Auditoria and it is a beautiful bookstore with uh, books in uh, mostly Russian but also English and Georgian. They have English speaking clubs. I went to make a Christmas ornament here to a lecture about gender and LGBT in USSR and overall the speakers that hold events here are very like prominent in Russia. So I think that all people who used to make to organize such events in Moscow and St. Petersburg, but who had to leave Russia, now they organize it here. And that's why I want to explain myself why I draw so much attention to the fact that these uh, or some places are Russian owned or I don't know if they are Russian owned but at least they are Russian speaking and you can order coffee in Russian there uh, I realize how it sounds that I am doing this in Georgia given the difficult post colonial relationships of Russia and Georgia and the fact that Russia still has military presence in uh, the occupied territories of Georgia and all that I realized that it's rude to highlight the Russian culture here overshadowing the Georgian culture. But I think that it's Georgian people themselves who should tell you about their country because like I can only read some tour guides and present that to you, but this will be not authentic. And it's natural that I go to Russian places and I evolve mostly in my Russian immigrants experts bubble. All my leisure and activities are in Russian. By the way, check out this mattress. Look at this beautiful mural. I don't know what character this is, but I see Georgian letters. And yeah, on the bottom there are anti-Russian graffitis. They are pretty common in Tbilisi, especially in this central district. I like this door. I need to walk about... And now we have to walk for two kilometers about. First time it felt as a big route for me. So, I will be walking along the foot of the mountain and from there we will be able to see the view of Belize from above and I really love it. Trying to understand advertisements. I know that this is uh, Binas, which means of apartment. And uh, this is Corpus Shi, in the corpus, like in the building. Teli... Territoriaze, on the territory. You see how many words like corpus, uh, territoria, uh, there are many words that have uh, re re relatives in English. And probably for foreigners and especially for Georgian people, it is unbelievable like how you can live in a country without knowing its language. But it turns out that for us, the Russian immigrants, it's quite possible here in Georgia. I don't know every Russian out of these 100,000 people from Russia who approximately moved to Georgia. But as for me, I live in my uh, 
information bubble and if I need a lawyer, for example, or an accountant, we would rather speak in Russian because their Russian is better than my Georgian and it's convenient for both of us. And probably they learned Russian at school as a foreign language or maybe even they studied in the most Russian language school or lived in a Russian speaking family. So yeah, I don't have connections with the Georgian culture. I don't have Georgian friends. I don't need the language most of the times. That's why I went to these Georgian classes just as a hobby, just to feel connected. And also it's important for me to understand what passers-by say. I understand only what uh, Russians say around me, like even if they discuss, I don't know, taking their dog to a veterinary clinic. For me, it's important because it shows me what people are thinking about, like it gives me this sense of belonging. I think, okay, these people think about that. It's not that I listen to every conversation of every stranger that is passing me by. Recently, the only thing that I understood in Georgian was when uh, a boy asked his dad, what time is it? Wow, I see the cars, they are so little. But it seems to me that in this video I'm showing off, and I don't want to do this, that I'm showing off that look, like I learned the local language, I'm a good Russian. But what is this phrase at all? I used to say it maybe one year ago, but now it's disgusting to me because it turns out that having a Russian passport, I am bad by default if I don't prove otherwise. And in this case, I even don't want to prove anything. But I myself have this prejudice towards Russians who support the war, Putin. And when I learn this about a person, well, I will not be rude to them, but it definitely changes my opinion about the person. Look at this old balcony. I want to have some adventure, so now I want to check the backyard of this old house. Let's go. Look at these stairs. It's probably creeks too. Hmm. No. Wow. This is some old wooden architecture. And this is the uh, courtyard itself. That's so peaceful. You can sit here. And what does it say? Tatsminda. This is the name of uh, this mountain, I suppose. Yes, yeah, Saint Mountain. Another thing I wanted to say about this house is that, yes, I found these creaking wooden stairs beautiful, but at the same time the conditions that people live in. So what I'm trying to say is that we should not forget that people in such areas live poorly, even though these areas look authentic and so on. So here I came to my last destination, German, and it is held in this community space called Frame. And you see this is the unofficial flag of the Russian opposition. And it's more like a political event space, but once they offered German classes and I decided to sign up. Hello, cat! Two hours later so my german class is over and by the way when i came to this place my uh, classmates and the teacher were discussing boris nadezhdin boris nadezhdin is a possible candidate for president in russia 
but most likely he will not be allowed. And by the way, here in frame, they collected signatures for Nadezhdin from people with the Russian citizenship, but who live in Tbilisi. And I left my signature and it feels as an important historical event. And here I am going to this place just for my German classes. So this was my video about my new hobby or an escape rather, because recently I have been feeling that I'm standing on one place. I don't see my future in Georgia, but also I cannot return to Russia and I cannot easily go to Europe now. So I didn't know what to do. And I decided to find some hobby to keep myself busy, um, to see different people every day. That's why I return to languages. And I wish everyone to find such a comfort hobby for yourself. I don't know, I have some goals, but I don't push myself at the same time. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is my first video this year. I'm excited. I wonder if I will be able to fulfill my goal to post more videos this year or it will be the same situation as last year. I don't know, we will see. Write your comments. Did you like such a format? Do you like um, walking around Belize, looking at street art? Maybe you have some questions or ideas for me. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Пока-пока.